So here's the second part of this encounter. We're going to be talking to the soft, semi-rigid and rigid packaging that we normally use for art piece transportation in the art logistics world. When it comes to soft packaging material, such as the ones that we can see in this photo that was for tapestry, they are normally used in order to create uh, protective layers of the artwork inside a rigid packaging, but not only. They are also used for um, short movement, like for example, when we need to move an art pieces inside a museum and it doesn't make sense to you know, construct a bespoken crate in order to make such a small movement and the lenters and the borrowers everybody has to agree to this but of course it's very useful also as well when it comes to art pieces that doesn't need a particular kind of attention and like it could be a tapestry that is very solid well made and even if it needs to go from Rome to Milan for example um with a road freight, we can have a dedicated shipment with a soft packaging type of attention. We have Tyvek and all the other type of methods of um, soft packaging materials that are mostly commonly used. And they are also, of course, employed when it comes to um, pack the art pieces inside the rigid packages. So when it comes to semi-rigid packaging, basically it's the same thing with um, an adding of a little bit of attention because it's normally uh, the same protective layers but normally include a little bit of cardboard more and anti-acid protection. They mostly are used when an art piece is okay to go with a soft packaging but it has like a Mm, fragile elements so in this case it needs to be a little bit more protected and this is a good solution when it comes to internal movements in a museum or um, you know easy solution in order to avoid the uh, creation of a crate a bespoken crate for this and of course it's a little bit more protective when it comes to fragile parts of the artworks so when it comes to rigid packaging, um, of course, all the crates, there is no such a, you know, rule. They are mostly used rigid packaging and um, there are so many. We are going to talk about the most commonly used ones and they differ from one to another. As you can see in this picture as well, they are all bespoken. So they need to take care of the peculiarity of the artworks, the weight, the age, the nature of the object, the dimension, of course, and the type of trip that the artwork has to do. And of course, what they do is that they provide a protective uh, container for the artworks and they are capable of maintaining a constant temperature and humidity condition when it comes to climate rates that we are going to be looking at shortly. Then, um, of course, they are made of popular wood. This is for a, an infinitive list of reasons. One of these is that, of course, the legislation prescribes it, but also the reason why it prescribes it is also because it has a really good cross-layered fiber. And this is very good when it comes to dissipate any type of distress or vibration in the art pieces. All these crates, they are they have a code and the code is inserted into a packing list and only the authorized personnel know what that code corresponds to. So it's very important for safety reasons and so that you cannot really tell which artwork is packed into which crate if you don't have the correct kind of decoding of that list. They are also subjected to a surface treatment with a nitrate-free, water-based paints and solvent-free in order to retard any flammability as well. And uh, we have some type of crates that we're going to be looking at. This is the most common one, the standard single museum crate, and is made of this popular wood and has a um, minimum thickness of 15 millimeters, but is normally kind of more dense. It is equip equipped with handles so, so they can be moved also without the use of mechanical forces. And um, of course, inside we have the soft 
packaging methods that we have looked at before. And um, as you can see, there is like a neoprene gasket, with the, which is the black part of the crate on top, and is placed between the crate lids and the crate on the edge in order to ensure hard tightness, in order to protect the contents of the crate from any type of dust or dirty hair or whatever the art piece would encounter in the trip. The base of the crate has to have some little feet in order to ensure the necessary space for a forklift to lift the crate. And uh, of course, in case of sculpture, as we were looking at before, there are going to be inserted little pieces of bespoke and wood in order to ensure maximum protection of the sculpture in the crate. This is a double single museum crate. In case of this crate, basically we have the same solution as before with one difference. Basically, we have an internal and external element. This is a crate inserted into another crate. So we have the inner and outer element, and between them two, there is a layer of material, of a material, the etapon, that is capable of absorbing shocks and vibration. It's the same material that we pack in the artworks into the crate with, but is also external in this case. So when the artwork has a long trip or a lot of vibration that he needs to suffer during the trip, this is a perfect solution in order to ensure a maximum protection. Then we have the multiple crate. So in this case, it's basically the same example of the single crate, but uh, the difference here is that you can pack more than one object inside the same crate. Each space has to be technically me measured based exactly on the morphological condition of the piece. Of course, in order to avoid any loose movements of the goods inside the crates, is mostly used when it comes to jewelry objects, any kind of, uh, you know, goods that are not uh, artworks like oil on canvas, but it, it can also be used on oil on canvas as well. Of course, it's cost effective and is very useful when you have a numerous collection to move. So in this case, you don't have to make one crate for each object, but you can have one crate for six or eight artworks. And this is very cost effective, not only for the crate, but also for the truck, because you spare some space. And um, all of these are all of these type of crates, whether they are single, double, multiple, they can all be climatized. What it means? It means that there is like a barrier that is made of some different kind of elements. There are many different options. Normally, we have a preconditioned uh, art sorb sheet with 50% humidity. We have a barrier of polyethylene and aluminum. It can be used in every other way in order to ensure a protection inside the crate in order to prevent any type of shock when it comes to humidity and temperature for the art pieces. So for climate control crates, whether they are single or double, we normally um, always uh, organize the delivery of the crate one day before collection of the art pieces in order so that they can adjust to the temperature of the art pieces that is already living in. And therefore, just in this case, uh, they can avoid any distress. Of course, we have um, a way to measure the kind of um, temperature and humidity in order to avoid any shock and measure and control how is the situation going. And this is the data logger. It's just uh, like a sensor powered a little sensor powered by a battery that um, registers every 10 seconds or so, even less, all the temperature inside the crate so that we can check it out during the transport and make sure to correct any type of problems during the trip of the artworks. There are, of course, a lot of other type of crates and rigid packaging. Uh, we have the cages, the clima box, the cases, the clima frame. Um, but this was like um, a little list of the most common use and prototypes in the fine art logistic world. Uh, when it comes to a particularly fragile artwork, as you can see, 
everything is very bespoke and in this field and in our work. So, for example, we have an additional type of attention that it can come with specific shock absorbers that are called skid mates and they are applied to the packaging in a suitable way in order to dissipate the overall weight of the artworks inside the crate and the crate itself is um, basically an internal um, element that connects to the external one that can apply can be applied in order to avoid any other distress we would use this kind of feet of the crate that dissipate vibration especially when there is maybe a broken road we that we need to take care of you no know? we need to pass by and furthermore all these materials that we use and propose to our client borrower and lenders private or public that they are they are also being reused as is one of her FERCA most important focuses at the moment to aim and promoting a more environmentally friendly fine art packaging production, giving this valuable plywood a second life and production cycle in order to make sure that they can be reused and they can become design elements so that um, in the first phase of their life, they were protecting a very valuable artwork and in the second phase of their life, they are now becoming an object that is unique and helps the environment as well of our relationship with it. This is all about our presentation. I hope that you find this interesting and I thank you very much for your attention. That's all and thank you very much again. Bye.